Hello everyone and welcome to the Starseed Dragon channel. This is our new perspective for the day and uh, we are using the Lightseer's Tarot um, and we got the <clears throat> Three of Swords, Temperance, Queen of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, Six of Cups, and Five of Swords. Very interesting. So let's start with the um, Suit of Swords, right? Swords is air element. Uh, it has everything to do with the mind, right? Uh, intellect, strategy, strategic thinking, mind manipulation, um, truth, right? Um, Pentacles is earth element, which has everything to do with our material world, uh, physical abundance, wealth health, physical relationships with other beings, right? Um, and let's see, we've got cups is water element, and that rules over um, emotion, intuition, uh, feelings, right? All the feelings. feelings. Um, the suit of wands is fire element, and that has everything to do with uh, passion, creativity, forward movement, um, entrepreneurship, uh, artistic, creative expressions, uh, intuition, you know, f fire, right? <laughs> it's very passionate. And then, uh, of course, we have one major arcana. Major arcana are... Um, they represent um, situations and events that are significant in our in our lives that will not go unnoticed. They're significant, and um, they they're the ones who you know come into the room with a spotlight on them, right? Uh, singing at the top of their lungs. That you know you're you're not going to miss those. Whereas you know a situation or event that's that's um, spoken about in with minor arcana is more subtle and you have to pay attention to it or you might miss it. You're not going to miss anything that happens when it's represented by major arcana, right? So the major arcana is temperance and temperance is about um, patience, right? It's about alchemy. It's about being able to use all of the elements in equal proportions so that there is balance, right? It's a very del de delicate thing to do, right? And it takes a great deal of patience and practice, practice and awareness, right? <clears throat> so you've got that going on, right? And then let's go to swords. So we have the three of swords, which um, traditionally speaking speaks of heartbreak or it could be third party situations or betrayals, right? Betrayals that hurt your heart. Uh, mental manipulations, right? Someone who is, you know, messing with your mind and ended up breaking your heart, you know, telling you one thing uh, when uh, then you find out that it's a lie or something of that nature. It's a betrayal. It's a betrayal of one's heart. And um, it hurts. It's deceptive behavior. Um, the negative aspect or the reversal aspect of the Three of Swords is about um, the same thing. You know, it's about um, uh, being betrayed, about feeling betrayed. Although, if it's in the reverse, it could be that you were the one doing the betraying. Um, so be aware of that. <laughs> um, it could speak of somebody betraying you, but it could also speak of someone, someone that you have betrayed. And, um, it depends on how the cards are laid out, right? And what it is that is being, um, sought after, what answers are being sought after. The five of swords, fives are, are, uh, let me go back to the three of swords. So the number three is about expansion, right? 
Um, so in my eyes, I try to see uh, different perspectives of the Three of Swords because it's got a very negative connotation. It, you know, in traditional tarot, it's a heart with all of, with these three swords going through it. And it's just like dramatic, right? It's like way over the top. Um, totally my opinion. <laughs> but, you know, it's... It's very frightening and shocking when you when you see the Three of Swords. Every time someone sees the Three of Swords in a reading, or even the Ten of Swords, but I digress on that one. Everyone gets all shocked, right? There are certain cards in the tarot that are shocking. Three of Swords is one of them um, because it talks about heartbreak, and you know it's not necessarily um, it's not necessarily someone else that betrayed you it could be that you betrayed yourself right it could be that you were involved with someone and you cared for them more than they cared for you and that that adoration that you had was one-sided and it wasn't reciprocated and you kept convincing yourself that you could you know convince them to love you back but you were just that's mind manipulation right this is swords we're talking about but this is also the number three. And threes are about growth and expansion. Learning how to separate your heart from your head. Learning how to understand why you could be so defeated in your heart because of um, mistruths or lies or some sort of manipulation or some maybe you're involved with a narcissist and they gaslighted you all the time you know it could be a million things right but there's the mind manipulation involved because we're in the suit of swords right but it's growth um which is indicated by the number three right so in all of these aspects yeah you know, this, this heart's being torn apart and, um, you know, there, there was some mind manipulation there, right? There was some heartache due to, you know, either someone that was being lied to, someone that lied to someone else or someone that was lying to themselves, right? This, that's men mental manipulation or someone who wasn't, who was told the lie and they knew it was a lie, but because they were being gaslighted and, you know, manipulated mentally to think that they needed to doubt what they were seeing as the truth, um, their heart ended up getting hurt because of that. Because they allowed them, that, that other person, to manipulate their well-being and gaslight them, right? It's the simplest way I could put it. So the Five of Swords... Fives are about challenges and changes, right? Um, again, swords has everything to do with the mind, right? This could be uh, uh, an intellectual challenge, um, a challenge of sorting things out so that you can see your truth, um, the challenge of um, overcoming any... Um, disappointments, right? Uh, any Anybody who disappointed you, in this case, with a lie, right? And hurting your heart and your well-being. Someone who, who was not authentic with you. I was going to say less than authentic, but no, there's no such thing as less than authentic. You're authentic or you're not. You're, you know, you're a wolf or you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's it, right? That, and I know that Everybody's going to go, oh, well, there's all kinds of, you know, gray areas. And I agree, there are, uh, you know, countless number of gray areas. But at the end of the day, you're on one side of that fence or the other, right? At the end of the day, it's one side of the fence or the other. You can't just like roam around in a gray area, just messing with people's minds and messing with your own mind that's no way to grow and that's no way to, to, to live one's life. And you're going to end up reincarnated 
over and over again to live the same challenges if you don't learn them now. <laughs> Get out of the gray area, <laughs> right? <laughs> so here we go. Okay, so a Six of Cups. Everyone knows I have issues with the Six of Cups. Six of Cups doesn't have anything to do with soulmates. And I, I get so tired of watching people, um, readers talking about Six of Cups having a soulmate connection. Yes, it, do, it does have some connotation of a soul contract, but it's a soul contract that you sign with yourself. It's not a soul contract you sign with somebody else. It's a soul contract that your soul signs saying, I want to experience X, Y, Z in this lifetime. And if you don't experience X, Y, Z in this lifetime, that soul contract follows you into the next life until you do fulfill that contract with yourself. It's, you know, this is a you thing, right? Um, it doesn't have anything to do with that. But Six of Cups, um, traditionally speaking, is about nostalgia. And you have to be very careful with nostalgia because people reminisce about, you know, their their younger years or years gone by um, with a bit more romance and sugarcoating than what was really happening in reality. The good old days were not as good as we thought we, as we think they were, as we now think they were, right? <laughs> you know, because our memories will, um, will distort, um, will be distorted with our feelings, right? How we miss that particular person. So we forget that that particular person may have been um, emotionally harmful to you, right? But you don't remember that part. You remember the kind, loving, happy parts because that's what our memories as human beings um, in our ego conscious wants to remember is all of the happiness and joy. And that's why you have to be very careful with the Six of Cups. It's about nostalgia. It's about the good old days remembering things but remember when you remember to be truthful with yourself that may be what the challenge is what do you think um the queen of wands she is i call her the muse of the queens she is the the mother that encourages the creative passion out of you she um, sees what, what you're, she asks you, what are you passionate about? Okay, go for it. Um, that's a wonderful idea. I support you 100%. What can we do to make this happen? Just go for it. And she is encouraging and she is artistically inclined and she is all about filling life with, um, passion and fervor and art and beauty and just this, sensualness that just gives you the just the the warm happy fuzzies right um that's what she's about and she encourages that out of people so that's why i call her uh the muse of the queens because she inspires people to you know allow that creative fire within themselves to burn bright use your intuition use your creative abilities use Create your world the way that you want to build it and be passionate about it and love it. And if you don't love it 100%, then it's not for you. Just go to where you just love everything, right? That's what she's about. She's very passionate and very creative and very dynamic in that. And, you know, just because I love the Queen of Fire because just because, um, She's all passionate and happy and all of that stuff doesn't mean she's stupid. She is actually quite brilliant and smart and she uses her intuition and she, she can tell BS from the truth, right? Um, her bestie is, uh, the queen of swords, right? <laughs> so she, she doesn't, she stands her ground and she's firm in her beliefs and she's accepting of other people's beliefs and open to other people's beliefs because she, she, she truly does love the world, right? 
But at the same time, you, you try to deceive her, she'll knock you to the ground, right? Um, so um, she's just that bold, dynamic, she's the boss lady, right? She's, she's you know, I'll, I'll help you to create your world and help you to see the passion and desire and love in this world. But you have to be passionate about what it is that you're doing. Um, and don't be afraid to go for it, right? That's what she's about. So pentacles. So the ten of pentacles, in my opinion, is the best of the ten pentacles. Or, or is it the best of the suits as far as tens are concerned? So tens are about endings and new beginnings. You have to be careful here. They're about endings. You're finishing a long journey of learning something. In this case, pentacles, earth element, it has something to do with the... Um, the world around us, right? Our earth world, right? Our physical realm. Um, it's about instant manifestation. And it's also about you've come to the end, you're done, and you're getting ready to uh, begin a new journey with all of this knowledge and wealth and abundance that you have created in this journey that is ending, okay? It's the end of a journey. You've overcome it, obstacles. You've created your abundance and you're, this journey is over and you're con continuing your life in a new journey down a new path to explore and grow and all of these wonderful things. It also has something to do with um, legacy wealth, um, which oftentimes, depending on how it's, on how it's, what cards it's laid out with, um, could indicate a windfall or an inheritance or some type of um, physical abundance, right? Uh, so there you have it. Those are, I think I described all of the cards. Okay, so what is it that you are getting intuitively uh, with these six cards? Um, what messages are you getting? Now, wherever your eye was drawn First, whatever card your eye was drawn to first, that's where you need to start and just take a breath and just flow with it. Let your intuition guide you to the next card uh, that you need to say, see, which is, which may or may not be right next to the first card that you wanted to see, right? So um, just go with it. Let me know in the comment section below what, um, what your messages are for today's exercise. So we got two fairy wisdom oracles. Let's see what we got here. 56, trespassers. Oh, she looks like um, kick-ass, right? She's ready to take names. 56. Okay, let me read that one. 56. 56. Oh, I passed it. Trespassers. Keyword, boundaries. Very important. Fairies have boundaries too. They are usually in the form of magical spells placed around sacred places in order to keep out those who might tamper with their sacred object, objects. They also have an invisible magic boundary around their realm. It is not easy to break through this boundary, but it can be done when one knows the secret words. Are you having trouble respecting the boundaries of others? Is someone not respecting your boundaries? A third question is, what kinds of boundaries or limits am I placing upon myself? These are questions to ask yourself in order to discover which area of your life you need to work on. You can, um, I'm sorry, you cannot expect others to respect your boundaries if you are not clear with them yourself. You must state clearly and honestly to others about where you draw your lines. Be kind of, but clear about your expectations. In turn, be respectful of others' uh, boundaries also. Their business is their own. Be careful not to gossip or spread rumors. Watch that you do not loudly uh, gab on your cell phone in public places, infringing upon the space of others. Boundaries can be trespassed in many ways 
and it is up to you to think before doing. This card also invites you to consider the boundaries that we place upon ourselves. We often set these limitations on ourselves due to lack of confidence, self-respect, or even lack of knowledge. Release any unwarranted restrictions that you have assumed. Release limiting habits and thought patterns. The dragon at your gate can either protect you or hinder you. What will you ask it to do? And the chant is, I come to the fairy bridge and say the magic words. All false boundaries drop from me. I come with a clear mind and free spirit. I am open to possibilities. I am respected and I respect others. Harmony resides in my soul. So be it. Sneak into the fairy realm today. Beautiful. And then what's our other card? Let's see. Ooh, rescued. Isn't that pretty? Little sprites. Number 17. Let me read that one. Rescued. Hmm. Interesting. I can see the connections. Can you? Keyword, assistance. If you have drawn this card, you might be in danger of relying too much on other humans. Remember to connect to your own personal inner teacher for guidance. The answers are all inside. Also, check to make sure that you are not trying to rescue others. They too must follow their own inner truth. This does not mean that you can't receive or give advice, but that you should take all advice and check it thoroughly with your inner knowing to make sure that it is for your highest good. Others should do the same with any advice you give to them. Things are about to change for the better. Ask for help and receive it with confidence and gratitude. Have peace in the knowledge that all problems come with their own solutions. With the help of the spiritual realms, there is nothing you cannot accomplish or handle. There are thousands of beings waiting to serve you at any given time. This is their joy and their salvation. They give you uh, assist or they live to assist you and to keep you from harm. It is their job to help you connect with your spirit and highest truth. Listen to their messages. These messages can come in many forms a thought or a voice beside your ear, opening a book to find the answer staring back, a message on a billboard, the words of a small child or a friend. Ask and listen. In allowing the helpers to aid you, you help them manifest their own destiny. And the chant is, in my heart, I know that I am always safe. I know that heavenly beings are around me. I give thanks to these small beings, and I welcome them into my life. They bring peace and comfort. They assist me in all that I do. They are God's messengers of light. Come to focus on me. I'm sorry. Come to focus on my earthly journey. So be it. Give yourself good advice today. Beautiful. And then we have, of course, it's my favorite. My, my new favorite is Into the Lonely Woods. What did we get? Time to move on, number 22, which is a master number in numerology. It's a master number. 22, very psychic. Interesting. Okay, number 22, I will read from the book. This is just such a great, if you haven't seen my review on this deck into the lonely woods, you really should. This is a, I, I'm amazed that this is not in every single household. This is such a great deck, but I digress. I really love this deck a lot. Okay. Number 22, time to move on. There is sorrow when someone no longer feels the way they once did about you, but know you lit a light in their lives. Even though the time has passed for your tales to intertwine, the loosening of the bonds of love need not be bitter. 
for now you must take your leave to refine refine who you are next to become you will not be lost when you follow the darkening path into the unknown you will wonder but there are fragments of your soul waiting for you to find them along the way be content with the light you carry within and the light you have lit with others this will be the guides on the mysterious path before you or oh, these will be these will be the guides on the mysterious path before you beautiful i love it this is such a gorgeous deck let me just take another look look how pretty time to move on that i mean all of these cards for me really connect to one another um how do they connect for you let me know in the comment section below i hope that you have a fantastic day and i will see you on the next video